Welcome back to the Eldritch Hearth. Since everyone is really interested in a case right now of a young woman who's missing, and boyfriend certainly knows more than he's willing to tell the police, I'd like to talk about the disappearance of Amber Wilda. On September 23rd, 1998, Amber Wilda called her dad, Steve, to let him know that she had just been in a fender bender. Amber had just moved to Green Bay to attend classes at UWGB three weeks before. 19-year-old Amber had rear-ended another car and it hit her head on the windshield, causing it to crack and giving her quite a headache. Her dad told her to go to the college and check with the medical staff there. He was worried and wanted her to get checked out. She did go to the office and they said she probably had a concussion and should have someone check in on her regularly, either in person or by the phone. Amber went to classes that day. And then that evening at 7.16 p.m., she talked to her dad one more time and asked him to please call her the next morning to make sure that she woke up on time for her classes. When Steve Wilda called his daughter Amber on the morning of September 24th and she didn't answer, he became worried that perhaps her concussion was far worse than they had realized. He called her several more times before driving up to her apartment. Arriving at her apartment, he saw that it was locked and her car was gone. Steve knew immediately that something was very wrong because his daughter would not have left without letting him know, and so he called the police to report her disappearance. The case was treated as a missing person because Amber had recently suffered a head injury, and so the assumption was that she had become disoriented and confused and had wandered away. She missed her important eye doctor appointment that morning and her classes that day, and there were no reported bank transactions. Amber was an incredibly responsible young woman. She had graduated from Campbellsport High School in 1997. Not only had she graduated near the top of her class, she had also managed to pack in enough college classes to earn her an associate's degree. She was entering UWGB in pre-medicine program with the intention of becoming a pediatrician. Amber was also four and a half months pregnant. While initially she was concerned at the idea of becoming a mother so young, she had worked out a deal with her godmother and aunt, Lori Ainert. Lori agreed that she would help Amber raise the child so that Amber could continue on in her schooling. So when Amber disappeared, she was excited and full of joy for the new life within her and the life that she was building. When Amber had called her dad on September 23rd, not only had she informed him about the accident, but also she was proud to announce that she had just been elected to the UWGB State Senate. Amber was not involved in alcohol or drugs or the partying scene, and so her family was very concerned for her. That concern only grew when on October 1st, Amber's Subaru GL four-door was found in the parking lot of the 50-yard line sports bar near Lambeau Field in Green Bay. The car was unlocked. Her purse was in the trunk, which is where Amber normally kept it. Her cell phone was still plugged into the lighter, but the seat was pushed all the way back. Both police and Amber's family immediately recognized that there was something wrong with this because Amber was around 5'5 five, five or 5'6 five, and kept the seat pulled very far towards the steering wheel. Obviously, someone else had driven the car after her. Another concerning detail was the mileage. A few days before Amber's disappearance, she had gotten the car serviced, so the police were able to note there was an additional 900 miles on the odometer that were unexplained. Police do not believe that the car had been there for the full eight days since her disappearance. Newspapers and the TV stations were full of information about Amber's disappearance. However, there was actually little for the police to go on. Any sightings of her proved to be false. The family papered the town with thousands of flyers with information about Amber, her disappearance, and her picture in hopes that someone somewhere could tell them where their daughter is. Her parents, Steve Wilda and Julie Ketter asked hunters during deer hunting season to please keep their eyes out and look for any sign of Amber in the woods. This was a sad sign that the family knew that Amber was not coming back. There were a few clues in newspapers around the time of her disappearance that someone in her life, someone who knew her well, was refusing to cooperate with the police. But the focus was primarily on her disappearance that she had simply wandered away. However, all that changed in 2016. In 2014, Green Bay police detectives Lee Kingston and Dave Graff took over the case. They resubmitted evidence, submitted search warrants on properties and on phones. And in 2016, they announced a suspect in the case, Matthew Schneider. 
who was the father of Amber's baby. In May of 1998, Matthew and Amber met at a party. They went back to her home for consensual sex, and they soon began a very hot relationship. Many of these details came out because Amber had kept a diary that detailed every aspect of this relationship with Matthew. Her family knew about him. However, Matthew had a secret. When she discovered that she was pregnant and their hot relationship very quickly turned cold because Matthew had a fiance. He denied to Amber that he was the father and he told her to get an abortion. Eventually, his threats to her grew and he told her that if she didn't abort the child, he would either hurt himself or she would never see the baby again. When Matthew refused to own up to this, Amber confronted the fiancé and told her this information. She also sent a letter to Matthew's parents. Matthew was enraged. He told his fiancé that Amber had a fatal attraction-like obsession with him and that they had never had sex. And when the police questioned him shortly after Amber's disappearance, he reiterated that they had never had sex and he had only met her a couple of times at a coffee shop. However, in 2014, when the detectives did a search warrant for Matthew's records from before Amber's disappearance, what they discovered was that Amber and Matthew had had ongoing conversation from May, when their relationship began, until the day she disappeared, and then Matthew never texted her again. An interesting piece of information about Matthew Schneider is that he is a construction worker. And at the time of Amber's disappearance, he was working in the Shawano, Wisconsin area on Highway 29. The highway was being rebuilt at the time and he was part of that work. The police have done several searches in the area and they also searched the farm of Matthew's parents. The police believe now that Amber was murdered with premeditation and that her body was probably hidden under Highway 29. Matthew has refused to speak to the police since October of 1998 and has retained a lawyer. Amber's baby would now be older than Amber was when she disappeared. Somebody in Matthew's life has the answers to exactly what happened to Amber that night and to where she is. If you have information about this, I am putting up the phone number of the Green Bay Police Department along with Crime Stoppers where you can leave an anonymous tip. Lori Ainert, who was one of Amber's best friends and her aunt, said, I think in the back of your mind, you still have hope in there, and you just can't get away from that. The family desperately desires and deserves answers. If you can help them with that, please call one of these numbers today. Here ends today's episode of Eldritch Hearth. Hagatha and I hope that the, when I return, you do attend. <laughs>